4 p.m. on a Saturday, and you know what that means. We're back for yet another episode of GFG. But before we start, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our senior pastor, Pastor Joylene, and our general overseer, Pastor Strike, for giving us this opportunity to engage with you as GFG. As you know, friends, we are always live. So this means we're welcoming comments, questions, and answers in the comment section. So please do engage with us. But before I go on, I'd also like to thank last week's host, Katekile and Pindulo, who taught us a lot about bullying. And I hope you managed to reflect on what they told us. You were able to go back and make amends to bridges that you might have burnt being a bully. But before I go on, I would like to welcome my co-host today. It's her first time here at GFG with us, and I hope you will show her the love. I hope you will enjoy all the content she has for us. Chloe, welcome to GFG. Oh, thank you so much for the warm welcome. I'm glad to be here, excited to be here. And yeah, this is really great. So today we're building on all the sessions that we've had, ranging from anxiety and depression, substance abuse and bullying. We are going to talk about this in a title called The Kindness Effect and how to make sure that your light shines into the world. So kindness. Tori, can you shed some light before we begin? What is kindness? Ah, yes, I can. And just to reiterate what you said, friends, you too can go down in the comment section and tell me, tell us, what do you think kindness is? What does it mean to you? Well, for me, kindness is deeply rooted in having compassion, acceptance, and just love because to be kind to someone you need to understand their experiences their behaviors their feelings what they're going through their situations and you empathize with them and you help them not because you're expecting anything in return but because you have a genuine care and you want to you know yeah <laughs> But Chloe, like we learned last week, we learned about bullying. I could understand that if you were bullied, it is so hard to show kindness and to forgive your bully. How do you think we are supposed to go about this? Because I would truly believe that God expects us to be kind. You know, I'm going to read a scripture for us in Ephesians 4 verse 32. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. And in this scripture, Paul tells us about Christian living, living Christ's way. And so we can understand that from this scripture, it tells us all the things that God expects from us, Christian character and Christian conduct. So the scripture reads as follows. Be kind and helpful to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as Christ also forgave you. So, Chloe, this is totally easier read than done. I'm so sure it is so hard to forgive and to be kind to someone who has hurt you, but we know this is what is expected from us. How do you think we're meant to go about such a thing? Well, for one, our first reference is Christ himself. I mean, the fact that he died on the cross for me and you, that was one of the most kindest acts he could have done. He died in our place. So we have a reference of Jesus first and foremost. So Colossians 3 verse 12 to 13, reading from the Amplified Version says, So as God's own chosen people who are holy, set apart, sanctified for his purpose, and well beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes, with good temper, bearing graciously with one another, and willingly forgiving each other, if one has a cause for complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you. That's a really good scripture. And I think the problem that many of us face is that we know all these Bible scriptures. You know, we've read them, we've heard them from Sunday school, GFG, and even our parents. We know the scriptures. But we know that God expects us to go a step further 
forward to go a step further than just knowing the scriptures we're supposed to not be only hearers of the word but doers of the word and so it needs to go an extra step you need to go an extra mile you can't just say i know god expects me to be kind i know god expects me to be compassionate but you actually need to exercise this compassion and that's where it's so hard so friends let's try to be realistic with ourselves as we talk today you know don't just say you're christian and so you're kind kindness has to be extended to everyone not just the people you love not just people that are your friends but even to strangers even to those that have hurt you that is so important so let's all take this time i know i did as well when preparing for this service to reflect have you been kind to the people around you have you been exercising compassion grace love to other people can i interject you over there what came about in your reflection sorry to put you on the spotlight <laughs> i think in my reflection a lot of the things that i saw is that it is so easy to be kind as i said to people that are my friends but it is not as easy to be kind to people who are not your friends i know um a couple of years back i had a fallout with a certain group of people who were my friends and it was so hard after that to continue to be their friends and even if i'm not being friends with them but to continue to be kind you know sometimes it gets to the extent that when you see them walking in the passages you're going to change direction you know just yeah. go the other way you don't want to greet them you don't want to say hi but god expects us to be forgiving god expects us to be kind and only after months of telling myself that actually i need You know how you would always just make an excuse and say no it takes time to heal you know i need time to forgive and that's not what god expects us to do you know god tells us that we must forgive 77 times 7 you know that is a lot and i think something that i reflected on today is really just that i didn't exercise kindness i didn't exercise compassion and i didn't exercise forgiveness when i was in that situation and now you know i know it's not it's not easy it can never be easy but i think there's a way that it can be possible tell me can you tell us more about how it can be possible yes i can i can so let's not stray away from the fact that kindness is a fruit of the spirit so god expects this from us as we are his children and as we say we are Christians which means to be Christ like. So in Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23 that is where we can find that kindness is a fruit of the spirit. So with the fruit of the spirit is that you need to have the holy spirit inside of you to empower you. It is hard but it becomes more possible and more fluent for you to be kind to people that aren't kind to you or even kind at all there are many people that actually struggle with being nice and you know when tura we go it doesn't hurt anyone for you to be kind mm. so yeah jesus is the answer you know you you mentioned twitter i used to be on twitter for hours in a day like mm-hmm. literally i don't think i would go a day without opening my twitter but it came a time during this lockdown even that twitter became such a toxic place you know yeah. people always were looking to point out each other's mistakes they wanted to criticize other people based on their looks how they speak what they have you know and that's not fair you know it became such a toxic environment you don't want to be absorbing things like that anymore and it got to a point where i saw people on twitter always advocating for kindness to be extended to other people you know there's no need to always be trash talking someone there's no need to always be criticizing other people and so i think there's a need like people on twitter pointed out for people to start a chain reaction of kindness and that's where we get our topic for today the kindness effect because kindness is a chain reaction guys your extension of kindness can really lead to someone else being kind to another person and yet to another person and in a world full of so much bad in a world full of so much evil we are meant to be the light as christians we are meant to extend kindness to people and allow ourselves to help make the world a better place tori i would like to ask our viewers could you mm-hmm. please tell us in the comment section somehow a way that someone has been kind to you that has changed 
something that changed your day or that changed a specific situation or how you have been kind to someone how have you extended kindness how has someone extended kindness to you Chloe, can you tell us how has someone been kind to you i feel like this is payback for putting <laughs> <laughs> you on the spot Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but um wow um even in preparation of this service i really struggled to find that one kind act that someone has done towards me and not that people haven't been kind but just like being put on the spotlight but um i'll take it uh very close i'm in first year and i went to stellenbosch university which is uh, a very small town and very closed because it's small so um on my first day there i literally did not know where anything is and while i asked uh i actually went to the src office to ask because <laughs> that was the only place i could find so i went there and i found a girl there and she really helped me she told me where to go where it is and not only did she tell me where it is she walked with me there and waited for me to finish whatever i had to do so that is really a kind act that is very dear it's that, one of my first memories in <laughs> in stellenbosch yeah that is so sweet so sweet you know i went and i read some statistics this past week mm-hmm. and i realized i read something you know it was so shocking you know why most people bully bullies bully because they enjoy it like it is out True. of pure fulfillment mm-hmm. and that showed me just one very important thing kindness does not come naturally kindness needs to be taught you need to be taught from a young age and from then on when you are responsible for yourself you need to continue to cultivate that kindness within you you know it's you cannot do it alone like you said you need the holy spirit to live in you and right now i know we have a few examples of kindness that was shown in the bible kindness from christ kindness from strangers to other strangers you know there's so many examples of kindness and don't forget friends we want to hear how has someone been kind to you we have yes Kofi. on a note of uh, bullies enjoying bullying other people and also going back to twitter and people pulling each other down criticizing each other on twitter it stems from a fact that people are unhappy with themselves and they are using other people to feel better about themselves which is not supposed to be the case mm. so that is why we go back to having kindness being cultivated in you from a young age with the help of the holy spirit that is so true we have a comment from one of our viewers they're telling us how someone extended kindness to them she says someone extended kindness to me when she made me feel welcome among her friends and her friends when i felt like i was a loner and i was by myself i think this is the most genuine way to show kindness when someone is feeling lonely or when someone really needs the support you know it it feels nice it feels good to know that someone cares it feels good to know that someone is concerned about your well-being and when you're alone when you see someone alone i know in our dining hall in first year we had a few girls who didn't know other people because they arrived late at res or something and you see them sitting in the dining hall on their own table sometimes it's good it's nice to go and extend your 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 smile your a handshake a hug okay based on corona you know we can't do that now <laughs> but <laughs> back then you could have done that and you know that could make a big difference in someone's day like you never know what's going on in someone's day. Sometimes I remember this one time I spoke to a new girl and she had just written a test and it was one of her major tests and it didn't mm-hmm. go well. And being able to sit, you know, just walk to the dining hall and get an ice cream or a pack of snacks and just talk and be friends with her. It made all the difference, you know, because sometimes you're alone and you don't know how to go about talking and venting. 
you know so extend that kindness to someone smile wave it really means a lot it really does and on that note i think you have a story to tell us about us rosario butterfield <laughs> yes i do so i'm going to be telling you a story that i read about a certain rosario butterfield so she explains her story as follows she was a lesbian living in in america and she always felt that christians were rude christians were not kind you know they were unmerciful she felt them being judgmental and so one day she took it upon herself to write an article about christians and their behavior them being rude them being judgmental and all of these things that truly shouldn't embody us as christians but sometimes happens too you know and so she got a lot of letters you know hate mail from christians telling her that she's living in sin they were telling her all these nasty things but she says that she got one letter from a pastor and this priest wrote her a letter he he didn't sugarcoat anything but he was kind in his letter and so when she was sorting her mail she decided to sort her mail into hate mail and into fan mail and as she was putting all the letters the christians wrote her in the hate mail junk and you know her fans in the fame junk she came across that letter by the pastor and she says she didn't know where to put it you know she read it and she's like must it go to the hate mail she did go to the fan mail and she wasn't so so she left it on her desk for 7 days and after those 7 days she decided you know what let me be friends let me reach out to this pastor and hear mm-hmm. what he had to say she says this was the kindest opposition she had ever experienced in her life and i don't know about you but i don't think that can be said about me as much you know sometimes we're not kind in our opposition you may disagree with someone you you unleash a rudeness in you that you may not even have known exists and so she became friends with this pastor and they continued to go out for lunch she used to talk to the pastor and she says he did not judge her he remained a friend to her and after a uh, some time she decided and she asked herself why is this man well he she's very aware of what he stands for and what he believes in why does he continue to be so loving and so kind to me and she decided that i want to know this christ of his this man that makes it so possible for him to be loving and to be kind and so that is how she got saved and wow. this this taught me something very special as christians we often go about being judgmental we often go about criticizing instead of showing love um the greatest way to win a soul is to show love to show compassion and to be kind and so all of us really need to go back and we need to sit down and think about it when you feel someone is doing something wrong when you feel something is wrong when you feel someone is hurting you how do you react is your opposition kind you know mm-hmm. are you extending love can your your actions truly lead someone to saying i want to know the christ he serves or do your actions make someone think like mahatma gandhi once said i will never be a christian yeah. because of how christians behave it is so important that we as christians build our character in a way that does not bring into disrepute our name as christians we must be like christ remember being christian isn't just a a religion it's not just about being a religion but it's about you striving to be like christ continuously and christ showed love and showed compassion in so many ways let us true on that note of the story we can see that kindness can be used as a medium of evangelizing to people just the pure compassion that you have for others and let us not forget that kindness is not only extended to other people but kindness also extends to ourselves and many times people forget that you also need to be kind to yourself when you're going through anxiety going through depression going through storms that you be kind to yourself too and on the note of being kind to other people Pastor Strike also always says uh and mentions that people are in different stages of life that you are either in the storm or out of the storm 
or you are heading into the storm. So it is crucial that we be kind to everyone, even especially to people who are in the storm because they're most vulnerable. And kindness is also used to encourage fellow brethren in their walk with Christ. Many times we get discouraged and it's the kindness that and the fellowship that people exhibit to you that keeps you going. So kindness really is like a lot. The kindness effect. That is very true. Friends, please continue to leave your comments in the comment section. Right now we want to ask you in what ways can you extend kindness to someone else? Is there anyone right now when I ask you this question that pops into your mind and you think I should have been kinder to this person or tomorrow when I see this person at church I want to be kind to them or when I see them at school or anything. How do you think you can extend kindness to someone else and Tori you were so right about being kind to yourself I think especially in a time like this you know guys exams mm -hmm. are coming up we're writing all these tests assignments are due and it is so easy to forget to be kind to yourself guys self-care is very important you know how important it is it is important to take care of your health emotionally psychologically educationally socially in all aspects you are meant to be kind to yourself because you can be very rude to yourself and kind to other people, but that will lead to you breaking down within yourself. You know, you need to be kind. You need to remember, you cannot study 24 hours in a day. You need to be able to take a break. You need to be able to do things that you enjoy. That is ways of being kind to yourself. And friends, please don't forget, leave your comments. Carol, yes? Leave those comments. <laughs> We're waiting. Um, but... On kindness, the kindness effect, right? We have this, a kind act stays with you for a long time. Like, it kind of like impacts you, it changes your day, it changes. Someone compliments you on your hair and you're like, yo, you walk like you're the queen of the world. <laughs> and yes, you are. Yes, you are. But that just shows the kindness effect, like just how wholesome being kind is and being an embodiment of that, especially as Christians, you know? You know, as we were preparing this, I remember the story Katekile told us here mm -hmm. last week and it touched me in that, can you imagine how maybe mm -hmm. life would have been different if someone extended kindness to her? at that school you know mm -hmm. can you imagine how much you extending kindness to someone else could truly change and impact the course of someone's life you know um i read some statistics on suicide today and they were mind-blowing apparently every 40 seconds someone dies of suicide wow. and i think it's not always the case, but in most cases, when someone commits suicide, it's because they feel alone. They feel like a burden, you know, and when you're kind to someone else, maybe they'll realize that I'm actually not a burden as much as I was, you know. So let's all be our sister's keeper. Let's continue to be kind. Let's continue to show love. And Chloe, how about we look into the Bible a little more and some examples of kindness that we see in the Bible? Of course, Jesus wasn't the only person that was kind. We also have... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we also have um, King David, a very popular man in the Bible. You know, um, King David was kind to... Meh? Look, guys, I struggle. I'm going to call him <laughs> Mesh. So... He was kind to that guy. He extended his kindness to him just solely based on the kindness that Jonathan had showed David when King Saul was persecuting David and just troubling David and even wanted to kill him. And Jonathan had so much loyalty and love and compassion towards David that he helped David escaped from his father Saul and from that kind effect King David extends his kindness 
also to Jonathan's children, Mesh. <laughs> and that is just beautiful. And it also shows how you plant a seed and you reap what you sow. So, and also that uh, the fact that what you do today does not only affect you, but affects your children and your children's children. That's right. Thank you, Chloe. Um, Friends, you find the scripture in 2 Samuel chapter 9. You can go, you can read it and see just how King David extended kindness to someone else. But I think another thing strikes me about David's kindness. You know, knowing that these are descendants of Saul, you would think Mm. because of how Saul persecuted him, he would not be willing to extend kindness. But there's something my mother always says to me, and I remember the first time she said it to me, I rolled my eyes. I was just like, (laughs) woman, you don't know how much I was hurt by these people. But she always says, don't let another person's evil make you evil. And you can also find something similar, you know, a similar principle named in 1 Peter Three, verse 8 to 9 and in in the story of David you can truly see how he didn't allow the fact that Saul the ascendant to Jonathan and Mash as Carol says um, turn him into evil you know he went out and he looked for him it's not that Mephibosheth came to the palace and sat and begged but no David went the extra mile he went and he sought you know he asked Ziba and he says Do you know any descendants that are left from the house of Saul? And that just shows you how sometimes kindness isn't just about when someone walks in front of you and you're just like, you look so nice. Sometimes you need to go the extra mile and show kindness. Sometimes you may actually need to pick up the phone, call Mm -hmm. someone and check up on how they're doing. David went the extra mile and not just going the extra mile, he extended kindness to a descendant of someone who caused him so much trouble. You know, who wanted to kill him? David even slept in a cave. Imagine sleeping in a cave and then you still go and you extend kindness to that person's Mm -hmm. descendants. I think that is something that is so special and you can see that in a person's own, you know, using my flesh with the capabilities that I have, without God, without the Holy Spirit, I would not be able to do such a thing. And it's so amazing to see how kind a person can be when God inspires them to be kind. That is absolutely true. Like it really goes down a long way and it's really beautiful to see and for some people to be kind, it doesn't hurt anyone, literally. It actually empowers someone, makes them happy, boosts the serotonin, you know? Yeah. You know, actually one of our viewers just said, kindness is like forgiveness. It does more good to one being kind. (laughs) than to the recipient of your kindness. And this is so true. You know, another viewer says, one way I can be kinder to other people is to let them know more often that I think they are special and let them know that all of the things I admire about them because you never really know how impactful words of affirmation can be on other people until you actually say them. This is, this is such a beautiful comment. Like, you know, mm. if I could take something and frame it ne, on a GFG, <laughs> these comments, I would totally put this through. Because you never know how much someone needs to hear those words, right? You never know how much someone would really like to appreciate that you look nice. You know, after lockdown, we all put on a couple of, you know, kilograms there Talk and some yourself. clothes don't fit. <laughs> or let me rather say I. And... You know, sometimes it's nice to hear someone say, oh my gosh, you look so good in those jeans. Knowing how much I struggle to put those jeans on in the morning, it goes a very long way. Words of affirmation truly mean something. And another one of our viewers says, yes, this is my mother, the one I rolled my eyes at the first time. <laughs> yes, Wise evilness of another person should not make you evil. Remember that you are ambassadors of the kingdom and that is so true guys we are god's chosen 
generation you know a holy nation you remember that scripture that says pumla would always ask us in gfg and we'd all go very quiet about mm-hmm. when she asked where do you find it today i'm going to ask you go back and find it remind yourself that you are meant to be an ambassador of christ you are a chosen generation a holy priesthood you know god's very own special people and that requires you to live by a certain standard you know you have been bestowed a crown by the king of kings and you must walk like a queen and you must walk like a king you know a king would not allow his name to be dragged in the mud would not allow his throne to be brought into disrepute you are meant to conduct yourself in a godly way and to continue to be an ambassador of Christ wow that's jam packed <laughs> that was a really nice those are really nice comments thank you so much for your comments keep leaving them down we encourage interaction so um how can you be kinder to other people let's come back home <laughs> as we said we need to be realistic right mm-hmm. i think you know i'm still at home i I'm schooling at home. I think the easiest way that I know right now when Carol asked me this question it was the first thing that came to my mind. I can be so much kinder to Blessy when she asks <laughs> me to look a million times in a day. You know mm. she'll always say, "Let's you walk, walk so <laughs> many times." And you get so tired of looking. But you know sometimes we don't realize that we can hurt her feelings by saying, "Blessy, I'm busy." You know, you can say I'm busy, but you need to say it in a kind way because she also has feelings. You know, she's a child and she needs to be to experience kindness. So I think mm-hmm. that's one way I can be kinder to someone around me. <laughs> How do wow. you think you can be kinder to some people around you? Um I'm exposing myself now. <laughs> I'm uh not lazy, but like I'm very like slow at doing things. So one way I can be kinder to people around me is actually doing what I'm asked and going through with it the whole way and kind of like really asking how are you feeling and really ask you not just uh we religiously say I'm good in you or I'm fine <laughs> or I'm okay and knowing very well that you are not and sometimes also being kind to yourself would be allowing certain people not just anybody but like people that you can trust into your feelings and into your your mind and sharing that cuz sharing does have a a way of lightening the burden that you have on yourself so that is one way i can be kind to myself someone in our comment says someone extended kindness to me because i was at the till paying and my money was not enough then she offered to pay for me guys i think you know one thing i'm realizing is that we all can like if you're put on the spot you can think of something something someone did for you or to you that was kind and this should show you very, one very important thing that kindness does create an effect kindness has long lasting effect on you as a person you can always remember something kind someone did to you you know and we need to teach ourselves to be able to remember things like this i remember um some time back probably a few years ago um on one sur- sunday service pastor jolene said close your eyes think of all the bad things that have happened to you and and then she was like okay open your eyes and after that she was like think of all the good things that have happened to you and i don't know if it was just me but it is so much easier to think of the bad things than of the good things that have happened True. to you and that is because we put an over emphasis on the bad things that have happened yes they have happened but remember storms are for everyone you know there is a time and there is a season for everything and so bad things will surely happen to you you are heading to the storm you're getting out of one you know it is there there is a storm in front of you you are in one or it's behind you and you know we need to be able to realize that that is how life works but kindness in itself is something that right now is very peculiar 
you know we don't experience kindness as much as you experience sure. people being bad to you but you need to cultivate yourself to be able to remember and to be able to see the good things that people have done to you it's like counting your blessings you if you don't do it often you will not know how to count your blessings but mm. if you continuously reflect on all the wonderful things god has done for you you will never forget because you're appreciative and so even when someone extends kindness to us we should be able to appreciate you know if you ask someone for a glass of water at home and they go and fetch you water don't just drink and keep quiet say thank you yeah. you know someone extended kindness appreciate the kindness that someone has extended to you you know yeah and on you talked about uh pastor julian saying that we should close our eyes and think of the good things and the bad things you're taking me back to abigail arise women empowerment the conference that we had um i'm not sure what year it was but um we had an a mini exercise to do we were all sitting down and it was close your eyes and it was uh, she posed questions to us as to like people who have been through um bad situations mm. and been through things that have hurt you and etc and she was like stand up so with your eyes closed we stood up and it was said that we should open our eyes so after opening our eyes you realize that a lot of people have experienced something similar to you and the next step was give them a hug and that was just like beautiful Yeah, no, definitely, guys. Hugs are always welcome. You know, this whole Corona thing is really cool. Yeah. Very, because you can't give hugs anymore. But you know, we wave to somebody. I'm waving to you guys. Wave somebody. <laughs> so, guys, these are just some of the ways you can show kindness. Another example of kindness in the Bible is the Good Samaritan. You know, that is the yeah. typical embodiment of kindness in the Bible. You know, when so many people just walked past. that man lying on the ground but that one person looked at him and decided i am going to help this person how many times have you simply walked past a person you know needs the kindness you know would appreciate the words of affirmation you know would appreciate you know appreciate anything but you simply walk past them and you say this is not my problem whose problem is it You know, you are here as an ambassador of Christ. And I believe if someone needed help on Christ's way, he would have went and he would have helped that person. Mm-hmm. You know, he wouldn't just simply ignore and say I have somewhere where I'm going. But Christ continuously wanted to reach out to people because reaching out to a person is the easiest way to extend love. You know, like Chloe said, evangelism isn't just about me holding my bible and walking behind you and terrorizing you telling you <laughs> that hey lang john 316 says no, for god so for god, loved the you know, world yes sometimes that is necessary but the easiest and the best way to show christ's love is for yourself to show that love to someone else because then they see that this is something special you know but when you go about you tell them all these wrong you tell them that they're living wrongly you tell them all these very scary things they may feel that actually being christian sounds very scary you know but when you extend that love you extend that kindness to them you show them just exactly you know and mm-hmm. thing is no matter how kind no matter how much love we show it can never compare to the love of christ so when you think of the kindest thing anyone has ever done for you and you think of just how much compassion and love god had for you they cannot even compare so imagine when a person who does not know christ experiences amazing love and kindness from you imagine now when they think that yo that means this god loves me so much more than this you know that song says Jesus you love me too much your love is excess mm. you know because it is so much it is bountiful and we need to be able to extend that love we need to be able to extend that kindness because Christ no longer walks on earth here with us but we are here as his ambassadors and we are meant to be extensions of him you know we are meant to be doing the work he told us to go forth into the nations you know we should go forth we should 
invite people you know into the life of christ by being kind by showing love and by showing compassion here's another thing on showing kindness to everybody and anybody there's street kids on the streets mm-hmm. and there are beggars on the streets and many times they'll come they'll ask for money or something and we turn the other cheek or look away it, it's challenging to extend kindness to them because you so you give them money they go buy drugs they go buy things that you did not do not wish for them or um i read an article somewhere where it was talking about human trafficking that some of these kids on the streets are victims of human trafficking so actually giving them money is supporting human trafficking which is not your intention but you end up doing it so so kindness is challenging in that way like how do we go about it i pose this question to you guys as viewers and i pose this question to us i don't have an answer yet <laughs> like it's challenging mm. yeah no definitely that's a very challenging situation but um someone taught me um this is strictly based on the street kids you know the easiest way you know they are begging for food and clothes you can buy them when you buy your groceries you know where they stay they normally stay in one spot you can add an extra loaf of bread you can add a tin of beans or and give it to them don't give them money and you can give them clothes that no longer fit you you know that is just some of the ways you can help them but also there's also the risk of them selling the stuff so mm-hmm. you always just need to be very careful but you know like we said kindness is a fruit of the spirit and so when you are led by the spirit you'll be able to extend the kindness and i i truly believe he'll also show you how you are to extend the kindness um we have a comment from one of our viewers they say thank you so much for challenging challenging us to reflect and see how much kindness we're giving out and also the importance of acknowledging kindness extended to us kindness really does go a long way and gives us an opportunity to extend the love of god to others and guys i really hope you're going to sit down you're going to reflect on all the things that we've spoken about today it's so important for you to reflect and remember that you need to be kind you know as much as you'd love someone to extend kindness to you you should be able to extend even more kindness to others remember it's a chain reaction we want to you know extend kindness in the world one person at a time you know changing transforming nations by transforming transforming individuals. individuals so you start one individual at a time you know you extend that kindness to that one individual they will go on to do the same and we can transform so many people in that way another challenge i have for all of us is what is the kindest act that you've done for someone <laughs> You want me to answer the question? You can answer it. <laughs> Viewers, you can also answer that. It's very easy to think of kind acts that others have extended to you, but those that you have extended. Um, wow, this is a very on the spot. Um, so <laughs> this year I I was a mentor for a first year student at the University of Pretoria. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of mentors decided during the lockdown that because you're not meeting in person they're not going to be able to continue to do it mm-hmm. and my mentee also decided himself that actually I don't think she will be interested to continue mentoring me and so he kept quiet for quite some time you know unsure that is she even going to be interested in continuing to mentor me does she still want to and I called him this one day and before his test because I have like a first year timetable and I was like tell me how is it going and he tells me that he was actually struggling with a certain module and because we're at home he doesn't know which department to call in order to sort out a couple of things and he's like my credits are not 
you know coming together i don't know what to do and i'm like no don't worry i'm gonna check for you and i'm gonna find out and i i called the department and i spoke to them and when i went back to him i told him okay they need you to do one two three send an email here and send an email there and i think that was an act of kindness because as a lot of first year students are probably very confused on how things were supposed to work and mind you this is still in first semester when all of this was still new so i think that is a simple way that i extended kindness to someone else wow that's great that's good um i myself as a first year student still do not know how <laughs> things run but yeah it's very wholesome so that that's right friends so tell me do you have any last words before we go on and close um my last words to everyone to myself is to actually go back and reflect on kindness and just being purposeful also in extending kindness because we can mindlessly do it but to also be purposeful that today i'm gonna go be kind to someone i'm gonna go be kind to nilithi and do something buy her flowers, buy her, you know, something to cheer her up, especially because now it's lockdown, we have this whole restrictions and we can't actually come together. But just those little text messages that you send, you're like, yo, are you still okay? Really go a long way. That's you extending kindness, compassion, empathizing with them. That's right, friends. Please do, I challenge you, in the next week, I challenge you, by Saturday next week, have a list of three things, three people, three things that were an extension of kindness from yourself. You know, we need to start small and you need to be able to see when you're being kind, you know, mm-hmm. in order for it to develop into an actual habit you need to do it consciously and so i challenge you next week saturday have three things and three ways in which you extended kindness to others but now friends this is all that we have for you today we are so glad you could join us for this saturday we hope you're going to be tuning in next week saturday as well joining us as we have new and more exciting things for you um you know we have a number of services running throughout the week and on weekends this evening at half past seven we have health talk with dr mangani tomorrow morning we have our sunday service you know we have mana kids online at mm-hmm. at three o'clock and next week we have so many services during the week we have worship in the midst of the storm on mondays we have the financial literacy with uh, on tuesdays on wednesdays we have pastor Masangu, and he will always encourage you to reach the top we are going to the top mm-hmm. Vazalani. <laughs> on thursdays you know we have men to men and it is so empowering how much you know i sometimes watch and i'm sitting there and i'm like this is so empowering you know we want to empower people we want to teach them you know how to actually go about being christian man in the society on friday evenings we have dr mkwena teaching us also the word of god so please do tune into all our services watch with us like our facebook page share with others because it is so important that we continue to share the word with other people so this is it from us friends we really hope that you've enjoyed it have a good afternoon see you on the flip side (laughs)